Hello all and uh, welcome to week eight, second lecture. Um, so in my first lecture I talked about uh, the conservative reaction to some of the um, ideas of the civil rights movement including bigger government and extension of some rights that some people considered morally wrong. Um, and uh, we do see a lot of conservative opposition to civil rights in the late 20th century, but there's also continued progress in the 20th and the 21st century. So uh, in 1990, the American with, Americans with Disability Act was signed. Um, for those of you familiar with the act, it's a really important part of civil rights legislature re, uh, relating to Americans with disabilities. Um, it was passed by both the houses and signed into law by President George H.W. Bush. Uh, the ADA is one of America's most comprehensive pieces of civil rights legislation that prohibits discrimination and guarantees that people with disabilities have the same opportunities to participate in mainstream uh, of American life, to enjoy employment opportunities, purchase of goods and services, and to participate in state and local government programs and services. Um, and it's also important that it was modeled after the Civil Rights, Move, uh, Civil rights Act. Um, and most recently, uh, in 2015, we had the, the Obergefell versus Hodge, which legalized same-sex marriage in all states. Um, groups of same-sex couples sent, uh, sued their relevant state agencies in Ohio, Michigan, Kentucky, and Tennessee to challenge the cons constitutionality of these states' bans on same-sex marriage or refusal to recognize legal same-sex marriages that incurred in the jurisdiction that provided for such marriages. Which basically just means that not only were they banning, but if you were married in an area uh, that was um, same, if you were married in an area that allowed same-sex marriage and then you moved to a state that did not allow it, your marriage was still not recognized. And that's clearly problematic with these kind of laws not crossing state lines. Um, it's a five to four majority rule. The court held that due process clause of the 14th Amendment guarantees the right to marry is one of the fundamental liberties it protects, and that the analysis applies to same-sex couples in the same manner as it does to opposite-sex couples. Judicial precedent has held that the right to marry is a fundamental liberty because it is inherent to the concept of individual autonomy. It protects the most intimate association between two people. It safeguards children and families. And by according, the legal recognition is a building of a home and raising a child and raising children and has historically been recognized as the keystone of social order. So it's again emphasizing how important the right to marry is. Um, so in conclusion, I know this is a super short lecture. Um, a lot of my lectures this week are going to be very compact, give you a break from the last two weeks. Um, in conclusion, despite some negative responses to civil rights in the late 20th century, um, there are also continued co accomplishments in those areas. And that we have to recognize that often with these things, there's both the negative and the positive. Um, this is my reference slide this week. Um, if you guys have any questions, always let me know. And thanks, and have a great day.